Welcome back to Rose Education, this is Zeb. Today I'm going to be talking about AHS. I'm going to briefly go on through technical analysis, then dive through the SEC filings, news, and anything I can find in terms of presentations and materials on their website. Make sure to drop a like to this video to help the channel grow, subscribe, and leave education on. Let's jump right into it. On one week perspective, what we get to see here on an MACD is one that attempted to go negative and then seeing a really nice reversal on the week of 13 September going to the 20th of September. Ever since then, it seems that it actually has still gained quite a good amount of momentum and hasn't dipped back down towards the negative side. Volumes have been picking up steadily and that is a really bullish sign. Unbalanced volume looks amazing. Although the ADX shows in a really high trend, around 52.24, that's where you start seeing a bit more danger towards reversals where reversals are likely. William percent R puts this one at overbought, although momentum looks really bullish onto this one and moving averages even though they look bearish for, for a bit, they're actually turning back to bullish. Now, on the one day perspective, what we get to see here is something as well along the lines of what we've seen on the one week perspective. Momentum seems to be really bullish. Volumes have increased. MACD seems that it was going actually a bit towards a pullback potentially and then got refusal and then jumped right back on. ADX shows in a very strong potential off a trend here. And, sorry, ADX shows in a very strong trend with the potential of continuation of that trend. William percent R puts it at overbought. Moving averages here looks some looks really nice. It's actually hitting the golden star where the purple line crosses the blue line here. The 50 SMA crosses the 50, 200 SMA from the bottom. Now, on the one hour perspective, and it's just merely for the next few hours, what we get to see here is an MACD that looks like it's actually stabilizing. ADX shows in a bit too high, so it might see a bit more, more of a pullback. And moving averages looks extremely bullish, although it seems to actually have stabilized in the extended market. Now, on the moving averages, what we get to see here is a, a really interesting perspective into how far it actually ran off. But just for the sake of the argument, on the top of the moving average band, we're trading at 75 cents, middle 68, and the bottom 62. Now, if we were to look into the, um, the stochastic fast and slow, we get to see that the stochastic fast gives us a little bit off a dangerous sign where it's actually hitting in a little bit too high on the top. So what we might get is a gentle pullback, very similar to what we've seen in this area here or this area here. Now, on the stochastic slow, what we get to see is that it's still curving up on both directions and hasn't curved down yet. So it shows in still a bit more additional potential when it comes to that. Fibonacci retracements, what we get to see here is support sitting currently at 131, a resistance 155 on the Fibonacci resistance that has been tested in the extended market and failed, 106 is in the next support, and then below that 75 cents. If we were to look at significant support and resistances based on the price action, current resistance is 156, below that 141, now supports we're looking all the way down to um, 133 and then we're looking at 128 and below that we're looking at 110 110 to 105 and then significantly 94 cents for the dollar mark and then above below that sorry 89 cents no significant trends can be seen on this one here on the one day perspective but let's jump into what I, we can find about this company so institutional buyers this has been a little bit deadly. Morgan Stanley pulled back a bit way back. Royal Bank as well back in uh, August. So that is interesting there. Additional for a crowdfunding ETF has been added around 3,220 uh, 3, shares. That was back in the end of September. No in recent buyers for ownerships for this one here. Moving on towards finding anything we can find on this one. Of course, it did have an offering all the way back in August. 50 cents to raise... I believe around six million dollars extra so this is at around 12 million shares this one here also released its 10q or sorry the quarter results so in the 10q form and what we get to see here is basically a decrease in total assets um, and then we're going on towards an increase in total liability and a total deficiency deficiency equity uh, is actually negative we'll go on towards that Liabilities and equities seem to be around the same. Revenues seems to be decreasing here. The gross profit to being half of what it was before. Closer revenue has decreased as well. 
and then we're looking in terms of the net loss we're looking at almost quadruple of the net loss and the net loss attributed to stockholders seems to be around four, almost four times total net loss is higher so that is quite interesting overall it looks like they might be struggling a little bit in terms of their financials moving on they have two current things they need to worry about one uh, it is the minimum equity which they basically sum it here in their form that was all the way early September so around a month ago and they need to maintain around 2.5 million dollars in stockholder equity required for continuing listing now with the recent jumps or, uh, that actually does reach it because at the time of the reporting they had it around 1.4 million with an increase um, from the time I believe all the way to very close to 100% they did reach so on this one here we're looking let's do the math quickly um, we're looking into July 14th back in July we were looking somewhere uh, a little bit shorter to around 83 cents so we're not there yet but it seems that we might be very close to reaching that 2.5 million dollar in stockholder equity now they did have a plan to reach there by releasing additional equity and it says basically in here in the paper it says the company expects to increase the stockholder equity by approximately 12.9 to 12.5 million and that will be through one of their subsidiaries by raising additional shares so that is quite an alarming thing the deadline for them is november 16th to reach there on their minimum equity it looks like they're on track so i would say that's a good sign there the next thing is their departure off their CEO and stepping down to, oh, sorry, not departure, the stepping down to become in uh, the company's chief operating officer. You can say it's based to, uh, to personal reasons, but nothing significant on there. Their annual stockholder meeting is on October 29th as a date for the annual meeting of stockholder company. The board also established the company business September 21 as the record of date determination of the stockholder title to receive notice and to vote for the annual equity meeting and so their compliance they have until december 11th so theoretically the reverse split might get accepted um and that's on october 29th they have until december 11th so they wouldn't probably do a reverse split all the way until let's say by latest end of november so if we're talking about december 11th we're talking somewhere about November 27th, 26th is where you expect a reverse split to be announced. Uh, that So you still have time. You still have around a month left if you still believe very much into this company and you see that you might actually reach up a dollar continuously. And I'll explain whether what's how likely it is. In a First, uh, no insider transaction seems to be reported, at least on record. I believe they also changed their website from the last time I've actually checked it. Uh, but let's take a quick look into their presentation before we do so their services is basically auto transaction auto financing and transaction facilitation so think about a broker where it goes on to either auto sales and auto financing so everywhere in between this is their presentation i'm going to try to go as, as detailed as i can while keeping it's a little bit contradicting but all right corporate structures Outside of China and inside of China, outside of China, it operates as uh, the Cinemayo Technology Limited Nevada Corporations. Inside of China, it has all these stakes in different companies. I think um, out of the blue, it seems that that seems to be a bit more of the norm in uh, a lot of different Chinese companies. Now, basically, they focus on the automobile industry. They have around $7 million approximately with a strategic investment investor uh, with an agreement that's uh, seven million dollars us is equivalent to rmb of 50 million dollars this is their team as well other ceo currently is the coo so no longer ceo i'm gonna go through the board of directors but they're looking at 330 million number of online ride hail uh, hailing users who paid express and luxury car services to China at the end of 2018 that's a um an estimation for 60 billion dollars transaction value of china online ride hailing services in 2021 and we we're looking into all these different cars big automakers announced plans to provide online ride hailing services 
So what they're trying to go for is they're trying to go on for a CAGR of above 24% when it comes to there. And they basically are trying to take a share of the online rating hailing market development in China, including in Ubers and taxis. So that's quite interesting. Now, the way they're doing it is a little bit different. I'm going to go through this in a second. So they don't provide, uh, for instance, or for instance, like a, an Uber kind of service. But what they're trying to go for is the automobile uh, leasing market rather than anything. And so going on. Auto sales, here's where things go on. So they procure and sell qualified vehicles to ride hailing drivers, measure of the revenue source of the auto business. Auto operating leasing is provide automobile rental services to individual customers to engage in ride hailing services, meet on personal requirement needs with lease no more than 12 months. The current business focus of auto business and driving the major growth of business. Auto financial leasing, provide automobile financing through financing leases with lease terms of over 12 months and so the actual flow for this one here is they're looking for uh, provide purchase services basically same thing sign loan agreements release provide management and guaranteed services and deliver cars to automobile uh, purchases so that's a little bit of um, next operations of auto businesses in Shengdu. we're looking at accumulation value of automobiles uh, automobile services of 18.3 million that basically is an acquisition that happened in March 30th, 2020 for uh, expanding their market operation for direct selling for vehicles. So in a sense, this can be seen as an interesting movement towards some, something similar towards IDX. Now the current growth is expand automobile business by the end of 2021 and increase automobile certificates um, in the two provinces. Build a network of services stations to expand after sales services organically on through acquisitions. Establish a fleet of management companies for financial institutions, which are funding to uh, the automobile loans. That seems to be all I can get from the presentation. It gives us a little bit of an insight in terms of what their operations are. Um, and so basically they're trying to go on through auto financing, auto leasing, and the selling of vehicles uh, as a one-stop all for vehicle purchases or vehicle acquisitions now coming in towards what i think about the stock and how it's gonna now i do expect that um, reverse play is probably going to be accepted but I, I do don't expect that it actually kicks in um until probably all back in the end of november it needs 10 days to stay above a dollar and it needs to maintain its higher equity so i think what the plan would be in is to make sure to raise that equity to uh and submit submit the forms all the by november 16th so there might be a pr coming on to there and then following that it might be a reverse split later on if it doesn't maintain above a dollar so that seems to be currently the plan and they don't seem to be very keen to get the 180 days extension uh, uh, the main thing that i don't see it right now happening is that they're actually planning for a reverse split the vote is already submitted for proposal as a proposal now, with the massive jump, there's no latest news. There's nothing massive that is coming out of here. They didn't really come with a massive acquisition. So the main thing coming in out of it is that bumpers who loaded around this region after their offering, and they basically bought in a, at a really good average, and then start pumping aggressively to try to quadruple their money. Right now, we're going on all the way from 44 cents to $1.50. You're talking about 300 uh, or three times the money they had uh, with doubling or tripling their money right on so that is my opinion on this one i do really believe in this company i even bought a lot more shares way back and then i had to sell them because uh, it started going on a little bit towards the downtrend what do you think about the sticker make sure to mention down in the comments they're subscribing like you have a wonderful day